Want to be able to solo the most difficult PvE content in the game with ease? Keep watching and I'll show you how. Global Event 3 brought us four new classified sets to collect, and the one I'm going to focus on today is the D3 FNC set. I'll be the first to admit I'm not really a fan of shield builds, I just find them a little boring and one dimensional to play. But for some of the more difficult PvE content, running this build makes it feel like you're playing in easy mode. In a team, this build excels at sitting up front face taking all enemy fire while your teammates deal out the DPS. However, as a mainly solo player, I needed this to do a little more than sponge bullets. It's all good staying alive, but we need to be able to do a bit of damage too. A lot of you will be thinking, why not just run the 6 piece Nomad set? There's a couple of reasons I prefer to run the D3 over Nomad. 1. Nothing is left to chance. And 2. When matchmaking or running with a team, you'll actually be assisting the team with your build. The default increased threat that the Ballistic Shield brings will have a lot of the enemies focusing on you, allowing your teammates the freedom to focus down NPCs. Plus you'll be providing a pretty decent buff as your shield takes damage. Don't get me wrong, the 6 piece Nomad build is a hell of a lot of fun to play, but more skill is required to be as effective as the D3 build. This build isn't ideal for every situation, activities like Dragon's Nest and Warren Gate are a good example of this. The build's lack of range and mobility does have it sitting as one of the more boring styles of play, but if you're struggling to compete with tough NPCs or your aim just isn't on point, you won't be disappointed with what you can achieve. I've found this build particularly strong in Resistance where I've carried entire teams through the more difficult waves, though admittedly it does fall a bit short when it comes to the timed boss waves. Not because it can't take down the bosses, more that it's a little slow to take them out before the timer expires. So it's best complemented by one or two DPS builds. As per usual, I'll be keeping this video as short and concise as possible. If you have any further questions, please just leave a comment in the section below. At the end of this video, I've included a cheat sheet that sums up this build and everything discussed here. Firstly, we want to focus on staying alive. As the 6 piece bonus states, when at 9000 stamina, Ballistic Shield health is increased by 200%. With this, the shield itself will have a minimum of 1.7 million health. But this and the 9000 stamina alone won't be enough. Even with another million shield health, you'll often find yourself being flanked by NPCs or under heavy fire in legendary missions for example. So we still need to focus on character and shield healing. With that in mind, let's move on to the gear and mods. Firstly, health on kill will be important to allow a steady flow of healing, so this has been rolled onto the chest and gloves. The maximum you can get on these two pieces combined is only 10%, but we'll be focusing on this more a little later on. Next, because all of your pieces have been rolled into stamina in order to meet the 6 piece requirement, we need to get some damage out of this set. Damage to elites has been rolled onto the mask and knee pads, and enemy armor damage on the chest, mask, knee pads and gloves. With all of this, including firearms damage to elite mods, you should be sitting at around 550k toughness, 43% damage to elites, 26% enemy armor damage, and 30% protection from elites. Even with low firearms, this build can comfortably clear out even the most difficult NPCs. Because of the nature of the set, you'll be constantly at the front lines, tanking damage and unloading clip after clip from your SMG, so your ammo is going to run out fast. Rolling ammo capacity on the chest and backpack pieces is a must. With your holster, there's usually only a couple of options worth rolling into. Skill haste or health. But because skill haste isn't really required, and you already have a ton of health, I suggest getting reload speed. The 22% makes a noticeable difference to the damage you'll be doing over time. The weapon talents on your primary are quite important. Here I'm using the house, but any SMG will work fine. The recommended talents are predatory and self-preserved. Self-preserved synergizes really well with SMGs, providing a 3% heal of the damage dealt from each critical hit. Teamed up with predatory, that gives a 35% health regeneration over 20 seconds and the 10% health on kill that has already been rolled onto your gear, you'll end up with a bit of a health leeching vampire build. But this is key to helping you stay alive. The secondary weapon really isn't too important, you'll only be using this if your shield happens to go down or you need some range. For this reason I'd recommend equipping some sort of marksman rifle. As far as the skills go, the ballistic shield is a given, but with your second skill you may want to mix this up depending on the mission. You don't need a heal, because as long as you're getting kills you'll be at maximum life anyway, and your skill power is so low that most of the skills won't be very effective. I recommend running either Defib for quick teammate revives or Overdose to top up your shield health, as any overhealing you receive is instead applied to the Ballistic Shield. The recommended talents are Critical Save, because if you need to use a medkit with this build you're probably in trouble, so the 20% damage resistance will help, Combat Medic, so you can repair your shield if needed, and One is None to help reduce the amount of ammo you'll be going through. 
An optional talent is precision to provide a little more damage. I haven't really discussed the other six piece bonuses like the buff that's given after receiving a certain amount of shield damage or the 2000 shield melee damage increase. Not because they aren't good, but because they really don't define the build in my opinion. Sure, the 30% armor increase comes in handy, and beating an enemy down with your shield can be pretty fun, but it isn't enough to focus a build around. Anyway, give this build a go and let me know what you think. It isn't the most exciting playstyle, but it will certainly help you out if you're a struggling solo player, particularly if you're on console. If you found this useful and you'd like to see what else I have to offer during this new classified meta, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!